it, it makes you think of, you know, where, where would I be if, you know, if this was my child? Uh, just the, the empathy that, that rolls through our, our services. Hearts are heavy this morning as Washington declares the first death related to this year's wildfires. Today, parents are fighting for their lives after losing their young son. We want to help these families who have nothing except the socks they're wearing. Governor Jay Inslee will travel to Malden today to speak on the assistance that he's trying to give families who have lost their homes due to continued wildfires. You could smell it in the air. You could see it on the horizon. Today's air quality is in the moderate range. We're talking about a shift in winds and how that could impact your weekend plans. Up with Krim begins now. While Washington wildfires are taking a deadly turn, a toddler is dead and his parents are in intensive care this morning after trying to outrun the flames. Thanks so much for being with us here on Up With Krem. I'm Jen York. And I'm Joshua Robinson. This morning we will continue our wildfire coverage as the Inland Northwest is now under a state of emergency from the fast growing fires that started earlier this week. Now, but first, a couple again is in intensive care this morning, suffering severe burns outrunning the Cold Springs Pearl Hill fires. Yesterday, authorities found 31 year old Jacob Highland and 26 year old Jamie Highland on the banks of the Columbia River near Bridgeport. They laid there for days, severely injured. Their little boy did not survive. They were visiting Okanagan County from the west side, and authorities say the wildfire this week caught up to the family as they tried to escape. Medics airlifted the parents to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle, and that's where family members say Jake suffered burns to 15% of his body, and he will need surgery on his arms. Jamie suffered burns up to 40% of her body, mostly to her upper body. Both this morning are in critical condition. And investigators are also ruling the baby's death a homicide in the event that this fire is man-made. You know, if it's a human-caused fire, that that goes into criminal charges um, for for the death investigation as well. This child would not be dead uh, with, without the uh, this this fire beginning. Now we do expect more updates today on the conditions of the parents, and of course, we'll keep you updated here on Up with Krem and on Krem.com. Meanwhile, the Cold Spring and Pearl Hill fires are displacing hundreds of people. This is after the evacuation of Bridgeport and Mansfield. People across the community are now helping their neighbors to the south as well. Families in Okanagan County have sought refuge in places like Brewster Middle School. And Krim 2 was able to talk to some of the people who are helping out. So while firefighters work to get all of the flames controlled, the schools in Brewster have turned into their own small town community. Sandra Zamudio and her team of family and friends drove out to Brewster to set up a place for plenty of donations. We literally put ourselves in their situation and, and without hesitation, we know that it's the right thing to do. Volunteers are passing out blankets, food, a number of other supplies to help evacuees get through this time. And the group has also passed out more than a thousand meals per day. And even though it's Bridgeport that's really affected, we're still one. We are still one. These kids go to our schools. We see them and we see them in town daily. And there's no way that we can leave them by themselves without help. Zamudio and her fellow volunteers say that the thank yous that they have been receiving are more than enough to keep them going. Just seeing the appreciation in their face and, and in their eyes and, you know, when they tell us thank you, um, that's, that's worth everything. Now we will continue to bring you the latest updates on the fires in Okanagan County and across the Northwest this morning. Also throughout the day on Krem2 News, Krem.com and on our Krem2 mobile app. And right now donations can go a very long way. There's a lot of need for water, for food, blankets, clothes and monetary donations. Here at Krem2, we are partnering with the American Red Cross at, and the STCU to help fire victims in our area. You can donate online to the Red Cross website. You can also donate to a local STCU drive through We've got the latest links and drive through locations on our website, or you can text the word donate to 509-448-2000, and we will get you the information that you need. Coming up now on 705, a big story this morning. Governor Jay Inslee is set to tour wildfire damage today in eastern Washington. Now, he is expected to visit Malden and nearby Pine City. 
That's where we find Nicole Hernandez this morning with more on today's visit. Good morning, Nicole. Hey, good morning, Jen. So we now know that 223 buildings burned down in that Bab Road fire earlier this week. That's according to DNR, but that completely just ruined the towns of Pine City and Malden here. So now their communities are rallying together to work together to try to get through this mess. As of now, the Bab Road fire has burned almost 18,000 acres. That fire is still 0% contained at this point. Like Jen mentioned, Governor Jay Inslee is touring Malden today, which is the city that mostly burned in that fire. He's planning on meeting with fire crews, law enforcement, and residents in the area. And in a press conference on Tuesday, Inslee described the devastation in Malden as one of the state's most traumatic events. In the last couple of days, we've had over 480,000 acres burn in the state of Washington. Put that in perspective, that's more than every other total year, with the exception of, I believe, 2015. This is an Inslee went on to talk about how the weather the past few days has really made fighting these fires hard for crews. He took to Twitter later that evening saying he will be thinking about these wildfires in the state's fight against climate change. Governor Jay Inslee is planning on being here in Malden around 11 a.m. today. And after talking with firefighters and residents here, he's going to move on to Pullman, drive down there to meet with WSU leaders to talk about their COVID-19 outbreak. Live in Malden, I'm Nicole Hernandez. All right, thank you so much, Nicole, for that weather update. We're smelling smoke in the air. We could even see it on the horizon just over the hills. The air quality right now is in the moderate range with a 60 AQI. We're going to be tracking that all morning long, especially since we have so many wildfires in the area. Take a look at this smoke and where those wildfires are located. Right now, most of the smoke is around central Washington in the Cascade area, but tonight into tomorrow, we're going to see winds move east, and that's why it's going to sit in Spokane and North Idaho area and potentially give us a weekend full of bad air quality, but we're going to be breaking down that in just a little bit. Here are your current temperatures for the area right now in Spokane, 55 degrees, a really beautiful morning, not really chilly, uh, 41 in Sandpoint. 52 in Moses Lake as well. So a great morning to grab a coffee. Enjoy it on your porch because later on it's going to be warm. Take a look at your hour by hour forecast in Spokane. A lot of sunshine to go around. We're going to see dry, clear skies for today and most of the week. We are going to get a look at the seven day forecast and when the chance of rain will come up next. Dana Marie, thank you. Coming up now on 708, taking a look at your screen here. If you're not next to your TV, this is a look at the number of fires that are burning right now across eastern Washington and in North Idaho. This morning, we do have some new information on some of the largest fires. Starting with the Cold Springs fire, it is now 163,000 acres in size. It's burning near OMAC. This morning, it's 10% contained. Leaders say several structures are lost, both homes and outbuildings. That number, though, right now is unclear. Right now, 275 firefighters are working to contain the spread. And in nearby west of Brewster is the Pearl Hill Fire. It's now 174,000 acres in size and 10% contained. Crews say flames destroyed roadways in that area and several bridges. Combined, the Cold Springs and Pearl Hill fires are burning 526 square miles. The Whitney fire has grown to 100,000 acres, and as of yesterday afternoon, fire officials say it's only 5% contained. The fire does continue to burn in Lincoln County between Davenport and Creston to the north and Harrington and Odessa to the south. Three homes have been destroyed by that fire, and level three and level two evacuations do remain throughout the county. Now we spoke to several fam families who say that they've been forced to spend yet another night away from home in Lincoln County. It was pretty terrifying. We didn't know where to go. We just knew we had to go somewhere. The Whitney fire first started on Monday when a tree hit a power line and sparked that fire. Situations just expired for the Euclid track fire in Airway Heights. Earlier this week, it forced the evacuation of Northern Quest Resort and Casino. It has scorched about 260 acres so far. It is 50% contained. Authorities say at least six structures are destroyed. Now, while those level three evacuations expired, level two evacuations do remain in place. That's between Spotted Road and Indian Bluff Roads to the east, Newkirk Road to the north, Trails and Deno Roads to the south, and Hayford Road 
to the west. And again, this is just a handful of dozens of fires burning across the inland, inland northwest this morning. Of course, we'll have much more coming up today on Up With Krem, including updates on fires in North Idaho. That's coming up at 730. And for more information on specific fires, including information about evacuations and emergency shelters, you can always text WILDFIRE to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you a link right to your phone. And coming up, it's 55 degrees right now. You can see the haze on the horizon. We're in the moderate air quality range. We're talking about how air quality can get worse with changing winds for your weekend.